Freaking at the Freakers Ball, y'all, right here live on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz. Oh, I forgot to change my thing here. Uh, <laughs> on this Friday night, November 27, 2020, one day after Turkey Day, hope you all had a good turkey or whatever kind of dinner yesterday. You know, if you do that kind of thing, some people don't do anything at all, just another day. I, I like to, you know, I, I'm here by myself, but I like to make my own little, my own little turkey dinner, you know, some kind of fond memories of days gone by before, before it was Corona World. Yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, all that. <laughs> hey, Moose. Hey, Grimnir. How are you doing? How am I doing? I'm good. Good, that's good. Good is good. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. What's that? Oh, I just made a loud beep on my... I was adjusting the volume, or, and it made this loud, like, ding. I didn't hear it, didn't hear it. Oh, all right. cool. All yeah. right, good. <laughs> but now that we know all about it, anyway. Right, now I just <laughs> told everybody about it, so, you know, great. So, you enjoyed your turkey meal? I did, yeah, yeah. I, I've had three of them so far. I oh, had... yeah, leftovers, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I had it, for, well, whenever it was done, like, 2 in the afternoon yesterday, and then around right. eight, 8, 9 o'clock at night yesterday, and then for lunch today, so. <laughs> of course. I mean, I love a leftover turkey sandwich, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's terrific. So, butter, yeah. do you put, like, butter, I'll say, for me, it's bread, butter, the turkey, and you got to put salt on there. I, 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 well, I like salt, but. You um, gotta put the little, just a, not a lot, just a little bit. It, trust me, Graham. Next time you have a turkey sandwich, sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. I, well, I do that sometimes. I, I, yeah, I like. No, it's 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 good, dude. It, I, it really it really adds like, it really brings out the flavoring of the turkey. I think you know what okay. I mean. Well, I like I like the uh, the mustard, regular American yellow mustard, and pepper. Uh, really on the, on the turkey sandwich. See, now that's something I have not tried. Oh yeah, well, those that. Make... Yes, I did, Rob. I spoke, <laughs> but I am doing a radio show at the time, so I think that <laughs> yes. I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of part of the deal. <laughs> I don't think Grimner would be like, "Are you there?" What? Hello, hello. Are you gonna say anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, howdy and welcome to all the folks out there tuned in and all the various yeah. places you may be tuned in from. Uh, great to have you here with us um, on on this, uh, whatever you want to call this, this Friday night, um, this freaky, freaky Friday night. Freaky post-turkey <sighs> day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, um, mm-hmm. I, want, I, want, I wanted to... Say something a little serious, but you know I'm not really I'm not very good at that kind of thing. Okay. Um, but 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 I, but I wanted I wanted to uh, just mention because I I, I notice I, I, various things here in the chat on the twitters on the other places. There's a lot of tension out there right now. A lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people are very. Yeah. You can, you can just feel it bubbling up under, yep. underneath the surface. You know. Um, yeah. And, and people are angry. People are depressed. People are sad. Uh, yep. Not not a lot of happy going on. Not really. Not no, a lot of not happy. Not really. And no. um, the thing is, all the stuff that's going on out there mm-hmm. in this in this world right now, mm-hmm. there's there's nothing you can do. Uh, we 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 don't have control over it. So you. No, well, you have control to a point. Well, you have still. control. You have control over your own life and how you right. handle your own things, but but you're not going to stop them from pushing the corona nonsense. No, you're, no, you're, you're not. You're, you're not, not going to. You know. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to stop them from pushing the Biden nonsense. Uh, you're not going right. to stop a war against Iran if that's coming, which kind of looks like. like it is. Yeah. Um, so. And so you can't let those things 
those things get to you. You can watch them and under, try and understand as best as you can what they're up to. Yeah. But don't let it affect your personal life. Be- because, you know, <laughs> it, it, it just, uh, it, 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 first off, most of it, other than, you know, the lockdown crap and the mask crap and yeah. uh, that that kind of stuff. Um, is not going to affect your personal life. Of course, with you know, with the lockdown. Oh well, yeah, no, it, I, no, I was fuck that. It is going to affect your personal life, here and there. No, 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 no. Bullshit. No. Now all of a sudden, you, if you go to fucking a grocery store, you're no. supposed to have a mask on no, your face. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it affects you personally. That's what okay? I'm saying. I'm saying. You're not saying. be able to go to any fucking music boos, festival boos, 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 because boos. of some stupid fucking highly survivable boos. fucking virus. <laughs> It that's, affects me, okay? That's what I said, except okay. for... I mean, it affects said, me. Except, if, you can't it, say, don't let it affect you. That It only affects you if you let it. No, this is not normal. None of this shit's normal. No, it's not None normal. None of this is normal. Okay. No one's ever okay. seen anything like this before. Okay. So I'm sorry, you can't just use these blanket statements for what's going on here. <laughs> you're not, not understanding my same. point. You're okay? missing my point. Not told- everybody's the same. You're totally, you're totally missing my point. I'm just, okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, because I just said, except for the lockdowns and the mass crap and the possible vaccines okay, coming up. Okay, you can't just say that no, it doesn't I can't affect say that. us because it is affecting every single fucking motherfucking person on this fucking planet right now. That's why I said except for. <laughs> except for these things. <laughs> Okay, what, which are? <laughs> Those things you were just talking about. The freaking masks, the going out in <laughs> restaurants or concerts or uh, anywhere. Uh, right. A- anything fun. <laughs> so that's what I was saying is except for these things that, that they have directly imposed upon you, right. all, the, all the other crap is stuff you can't do anything about. You can't do anything about the propaganda. You can't do anything about the politics. You can't do anything about... Uh, the, the the wars no. and crap like that. Uh, right, right. So don't let those things affect you. Don't be bothered by those things. Live your life as normal as possible. But you can't with, just with, say that because I, it's bothersome to freaking have to do this shit and not be able to go. I know it is. And fucking do uh, the usual because yeah, yeah. it's not the usual time, Grimnir. That might have applied a year ago. Okay. Yeah, see, but you know, you didn't it let doesn't me apply now. It everything's fucking different. <laughs> you can't just. I mean, Christ's sake! You could your state could be called Nazi Mexico it is. right now because because I've seen, it's a I've lockdown. Seen it. I've seen I mean, it. What the fucking thing's going on here? People have to get over the fact that it's going to go back to how it was because I got news for you guys. It's not going it's to. It's not. It's not. We it's don't not know. going to. So quit living in the goddamn past because it's not going to go back to the way it was ever. Right. Because they have an agenda and they're fucking <laughs> carrying it out. And if you can't fucking see that, I don't know what to fucking tell you. You're right. not seeing the forest through the trees. Simma, Simma. If you've right. got a hard time with my tone, <laughs> then shut this fucking show off right now. Simma, Simma. Okay. Uh, see, that's what I was saying. Is That's what I'm saying too, Graham. <laughs> Is if you want to be a dumbass, that's up to you. Okay, it's up to each uh, and everybody, each and every person. Okay, it is. It is. There's no doubt about that. But but all I was saying was, as far as the the stuff going on, other than the stuff that is being directly forced upon you, all these these masks and lockdowns and shit. Other than that. <laughs> Don't let the rest what else is there this year, though? There's nothing. No, there's okay? no, there, We're not well, supposed to be doing anything, dude. We're not supposed to be working. We're not supposed to be having any, go to any bars. We can't go to movies. We can't go to the gym. We can't do anything socializing, <laughs> any socializing at all, basically. Okay? Uh, this, if this doesn't remind you of fucking Germany in the 1930s, late 1930s, early 40s, I don't know what to fucking tell you either. Because it's the same freaking playbook. The Nazis did the same exact fucking thing. (laughs) 
fine, okay? Fine, they Moose, that's fine, did. that's fine. I, I was, I was just... Like, uh, the mask uh, is like <laughs> a star, a yellow star in fucking the ghetto in, in fucking Warsaw, okay? All right, well, whatever. Uh, I mean, no, yeah. it's not whatever. No, it is, it is because, yeah. you see, I was... I this was, is a fucked up year for every fucking buddy. <laughs> You missed my whole point, and you ruined my whole message. Point, don't let it affect you. How can you not, Grim? How can you not let this shit affect you? you, you what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Turn off the internet? Okay. Uh, that might work. Turn off your TV? That might work. Yeah. Never but mind. But what are you supposed it's, it's, I, I, no, I, I, I was, Never mind. I want to still talk about this. Well, I, well, will, I will simmer down. I, 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 will I, simmer down. I, I, I was just trying to come on and give people a kind of a nice, calming... Message. Well, well, you can't. I can too. No, well, you can try, <laughs> but there's people have their blinders on still, Graham. God. Okay, you, you you can be all nice and happy horse shit and butterflies and unicorns or fart and glitter. You know, it's, it's come on. Yeah. See what the forest of the trees. I'm yeah. sorry, you guys. I mean, I. It, it's been a shitty year for everybody, okay? It I has been. All it right, been. so, you know, I'm sorry, Graham. I apologize if I... It's all right, Moose. I you, know, just, you know, I know you have very, very... I mean, it has affected you in serious ways. That I mean, has, not that bad. I mean, no, I haven't no, no, been no, on yes. my it's deathbed it's... or anything. Nothing like that. It's not a big fucking deal about me. It doesn't fucking matter about festivals and fucking... Co- I don't... I mean, yeah, I care, but it's sure not the end do. of the fucking world. I, I will survive if I don't... Have, can't go to a concert. You're you're a social person. I understand that. So, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Grim. It's all right. <laughs> no, it ain't really. I mean, I'm going to get criticized up the a- asshole, like usual, but at least I have the balls to fucking... Get on the internet, do a radio show for over twelve years, and say my my words, okay? You do. Yeah, I don't care if you like my words or not, but I, at least I'm doing that, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh wow! All right. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm maybe you should have talked to me earlier before we went on, Grim. I don't know, but I mean. I, I, no, I, I, it's fine. I, I just just wanted to say this and whatever. It doesn't really matter. I, I mean, you got to deal with all the shit you got to deal with, and and it's a lot of crap that's going on that's that's being pushed upon everybody, and and those are the things that we have to suffer when when we when we suffer them. Um, and, and and to me, and the we're ma- all in. Uh, the, to okay. me, the masks, yeah, no. the, the masks are the worst thing. Um, uh, seeing the, seeing the morons on on the various social media uh, spouting their views, supporting the lockdown, supporting the masks, supporting the vaccines, believing the numbers, believing the government. See that that stuff drives me nuts. But you can't let you can't let all these people get to you, and, and you can't let. Like I said, all this election nonsense, you can't let that get to you. And it's some people that's totally consuming to them. Um, and, and, it, and it's totally corrupt and totally nonsense. And, and people think there's actually an election going on out there, which, of course, there's not. Uh, but but they, they look at it like there is. And they look at all these little court cases and uh, protests and things like that as 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 if those are things that that are going to directly and, and come and change their life. Of course they're not, because um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who sits in the White House, not at all. Now, I mean, maybe you got some local stuff that uh, you had an election for that that you had a feeling of positive or negative for, and I have meh. Whatever they're going to do, they're going to do. Um, and and my my voice in that, you know, whatever. It's not going to matter uh, too much. On that, and and I just want it all to go away. Of course, that's not going to happen, um, <laughs> is it? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I'm. I. I, I you, you. You can't do this to people. I mean, I think at this point, a lot of people are like. But they can't do this. this. They. They. they we're, can't. We're, we're, people are done. Okay, they're having whatever they that term they called it, in the middle of this shit. They called it some like. Uh, COVID fatigue or something. It's like, yeah, you know, we're tired of this shit. 
Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're, it's like, come on, how much yeah. more? I, well, they are they are definitely not willing to let go of all that yet. No, and they're not uh, done. No, they've, they've got they've no. got they got no. big big plans for this Corona nonsense. Yeah, they do. Um, so yes, it, they're yeah they're not going to stop, and I'm they they've already told told us what is coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have said it. Long, dark, hard winter. Okay, it's been said more than once. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So you, they usually do that. They usually t- say what they're going to do before they do it, if you're paying attention. All right. Well, that, that, that's correct, absolutely. Um, anyway, uh, these these guys here, I think they have a message that may be okay. beneficial to us all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish they had some belly. I'm just about <laughs> That might be fun. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> or some quaalude, or something. I don't know. Yeah, or or something, something. Right. Anyway, yeah, something. So, I don't know. So, so like I said, maybe these guys' message will help everybody. I hope so. If you follow the message. I swear, sometimes you're taking me. Oh yeah, some nice stuff right there. Let me tell you. <laughs> that was Dion doing my baby I loves the boogie with John Hammond. That's that's a, that's some grooving stuff, man. All right. Uh, before that, we had Jeff Beck with Amelda May. Oh, Amelda doing uh, Aerosmith. Oh, no, it's actually not actually Aerosmith, but Aerosmith covered it also. Remember, uh, Walking in the Sand. I forget who did that originally, but it's an older tune. Um, a- anyway, we kicked it off there with Sublime and... Uh, the suggestion I had for y'all, let's go get stoned. Yes, very nice video, Cowboy Tech. Um, <laughs> some nice little gals in there dancing around. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. So you're back with me? Yo. Yo. So how'd you, how'd you like that Dion tune there? It was good. Yeah, it was good stuff. That was very good. And that was oh. your that was your request, Sublime. Let's go get stoned. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that was the right song. I don't know. That was for you, I think. It was for me. I think I requested that one for you specifically. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> I don't know. If there was dancing girls. I'm sure that was my thinking behind that. Oh request. no 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 that 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 first one was just a static image of a Sublime album cover. Oh okay oh okay. Never mind then. No, no. I, I was I wasn't watching the uh, Dion was the one with the dancing girls. I was listening. I wasn't watching. You, okay. You, you should check that video out because that's. Uh, I will. You, you'll dig that. Yeah, it's Dion. Uh, my baby loves to boogie. And, okay. Uh, so yeah. Nice. Yeah. And she loves to boogie. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Okay. So anyway, um, it's just, I'm at a loss for words sometimes here because it's just some of the stuff that's going on. It's just, it's insanity overload. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just so weird. It's, I don't know how to explain it. It's like surreal. Oh, the whole, the whole world's on fire, basically. I mean, if you want to look at it that way, but, uh. There's more shit coming. There's big shit coming. It, oh, I mean, yeah, uh, we're not out of the woods yet at no, all. No, no, no. We're, 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 we're barely I, past the first tree. Um, one of the things, I mean, they've been saying long, hard winter, long, dark winter. Um, and that, that what, what does that mean? I mean, it, it, like people have brought up in the chat or whatever, and I have even said, it's always darker in the wintertime. It starts when you live where, in Wisconsin, where I live, or Minnesota, or, you know, in the northern climate. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always darker in the winter, and SAD, seasonal affective disorder, is a real thing, dude. Right. And that's really going to affect people even more this year. It probably has already affected people throughout the summertime because, yeah, people went out and about and did things, but not like they normally do. You know what I mean? Right, right. Right. Um, I also believe that part of this agenda and part of this lockdown thing and the social distances are 
social distancing, there's many aspects that go into all this. A lot of it's psychological. You know what I'm saying? Hugely, um, hugely psychological. Yeah, because like the ma- the social distancing or the physical distancing, six feet apart. Right. It's harder to talk to people that way. You Especially have to talk when louder you're, when you're six feet apart, right? And, and and mumbling through a mask. And trying to talk through a mask. So you're trying to yell through this mask at this person. You're and, and I think it's symbolic for not wanting us to say anything. Right. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. And it's, so it's it, to me this equates as see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we're just supposed to keep our mouth shut, and that's why they want us to wear our masks like good little peons. Right. And they want us to not be close to each other at all. You know, even your family members, they don't want you to be close to them. No, they do not. Right. uh, And then just the... um, the lack of socialization, which it, it doesn't affect everybody the same, but it affects people that like to do that. You know, it makes you depressed. It makes you, you know, I've just been so bummed out for the musicians out for like nine months. Right. You know what I mean? And, 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 all my favorite bands, all the venues they play at, you know, the employees and the owners of those venues, right. you know, they're all going to go out of business. They, you can't keep a business running if you don't have any profit coming in, unless you you have the money set aside. Yeah, well, no, nobody does. That, that's, that's that's ridiculous. Very few people do. Right, mm, exactly. Shut down yep. your shut, shut down your business for a year and expect it to keep going. No, no, that, that's not how business works. Right. And anyway, the uh, the first thing I, the thing that I saw today that really I I, I don't know what it just. I'm not really surprised by it or stunned as much as I, I guess I really, when I was reading through this stuff, the, the way it made me feel that these people, this is what they think. But, but there was a tweet over on the Twitter there today uh, from, from Variety, which is like a magazine or something. And, yeah. Um, and, it's, and it says, music legends Eric Clapton and Van Morrison Team up for anti-lockdown single, Stand and Deliver. Huh. Right? Okay. Interesting. And I thought, that, that's awesome. That's terrific. And then I started reading down through the uh, the comments. And all of these people, they're so angry. They're, they, they, they so hate the idea of somebody speaking out against the lockdowns. And, and the, these people are vicious about it. And I, I just... I, Going through all these comments uh, to this tweet, um, you know, people like, okay, I'm deleting all their music if I, that I have, or these people, I can't follow these people. Um, oh yeah, you want you 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 had a son that died. Talking to Eric Clapton, and you and you think people should go out there and 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 be able to be together? What's wrong with you? Uh, you you think you should save music at the at the cost of people's lives? What's wrong? Double douchebags. Uh, and it's like, what the hell? What the hell is this? Well, well, why are these people so down on an anti-lockdown message? We're not talking about uh, going out and I don't know whatever, breathing on other people. I guess I I don't know. But the but the whole thing uh, is is these people are by they have bought hook, line, and sinker. The whole idea, the concept behind all this corona nonsense that these lockdowns actually work and it's obvious they don't, uh, that the masks work and they don't, and, and, and it's all just 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 such crazy stuff. But uh, look at looking through all all of these um, th- these comments here. Um, uh, this person, I loved Van Morrison. I recently saw him in concert. It was one of the best. Never again. Just, what what's wrong with you? What what is what is what is what the hell is wrong with these people? Can you answer me that? What is wrong with these it people? It doesn't go along with what they believe, Grim. <laughs> they believe in this crap, this lockdown. They believe in the government. They believe in this these things. They eat it up hook, hook line and sinker. They buy hook line and sinker. They buy it. Yeah. Because yeah, they and... don't think for themselves, do they? They go to work at their drone job. They come home from work. They turn the TV on. And, and listen, they how watch the news, the local news, or the the, the uh, 
the uh, headline of national news. They watch the national news and the local news. Then they watch their shows. They're mind-numbing and while what? they're drinking their glass of wine and overeating and sitting on their fucking couch. Okay? And listen how... That's the average American. That's what they do. No, I, I, I don't know how many of these are even American, but... They go to work in the morning. They come home. They work their 40-hour-a-week job, their drone-like job. Every time they come home from work, they as soon as they walk in the door, they turn that goddamn TV on. Right, right. And then they fucking listen to it. Even if they're not in front of it watching it, they hear it. But but listen to how vile these okay. people are. This, 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 this guy says... Is yep. this the song that brings his son back? How? how oh, my God. How uh, can you be that cruel? That's fucking he vile. His son. This was like 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And these people. 40, 30 years. I mean, he was, the kid was like three, and it was a totally tragic story. The, the, how could you even do that to somebody and bring that up and make, oh, my God. That is vile and evil, Grim. That it is. is totally, oh, it my is. God. It is, and it, and it, and it, and it's comment after comment like this. And it this. destroyed that man. It destroyed his marriage. It destroyed his whole family. Why would you do that to somebody? Like rubbing salt in somebody's wound. What are you, a fucking Nazi? What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh my God. This is what I'm talking about. This is hate. Okay? I'm not going to accept hate as a rule of thumb. Okay? It's not going to happen for me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's, 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 it's. These these people are just disgusting. That, yeah. that that writing writing all these comments and and there's thousands of comments on this. Uh, right, uh, I'm the, sure. Uh, of these people just being total dick wipes. Um, yeah, wow. Well. Uh, anyway, so the, the article yeah. on Variety is okay, I guess. Uh, they they got their propaganda in there, of course. They're one of the they're one of them. But uh, you know, they're they're talking about the song and the, and them teaming up and. Um, uh, you know, good stuff. So if you look at the, the Variety article, uh, you'll see it. It's all right. But but uh, the people, man, the, those people on Twitter, wow, I was just, I was set up, I just, I couldn't even believe it. Um, That's what hate does, Grim. It, it makes it, you lose your freaking mind. It's fucking insane. It makes you really, it, can, it, it will consume you, just like jealousy does for some people. Right. Okay. Right. Hate, hate and jealousy are like, I don't know what. It seems like there's more of it lately. It's just like I, uh, can't, oh. I, I can't even like fathom. It's just like what the fuck happened? Well, okay. What well, one, one of the comments you know, that I what the fuck? One, one of the comments okay. I saw in there. I don't. I don't have it up right now. Yeah. But some some woman said Eric Clapton's a total fascist for wanting to wanting to stop the lockdowns. I'm like, what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait! You got this twisted, lady. Uh, the fascists uh, are the one backwards there, lady. Yeah, the fascists are the one locking you down, not the one saying something against the lockdown. Holy yeah. hell! <laughs> God, I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what kind of logic these people are using. It, it, it's just so messed up. It's, it, it's like, how? I, 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 it's not right. It's ass backwards, Grim. They get their information from the TV, from the mainstream media. That's what drives most of these people, okay? Yeah, yeah. They believe what they believe. If they watch CNN, they believe CNN. If they watch Fox, they believe Fox. If they watch whatever it is. And then they yeah. do their drone 40 hour a week job. They come home. First thing they do, and they're always on their phone too all day long. Like, oh, yeah. It never turns up. Right. And so you come home. And you turn the TV on while you're making dinner. You're listening to this shit being in, in, pumped into your brain, right? Mm -hmm. While you're making dinner, and then you eat dinner, and then you you, in, you pour yourself a glass of wine. You sit down and watch some moron sitcoms or Dancing with the Stars or some stupid ass shit. Yeah. And you go to bed and you get up and you do it the next day. On and on and on. Right, most people only get two days off a week, but you really only get one and a half days off because the only really true day you get off is Saturday, okay? Right, and that day you, you got to work Friday. You got to work Friday. You get off at five, okay? So you're you're free after five on Friday. Yeah. And then you go to the bar 
and have a good time, and you can sleep in a little bit on Saturday, but then you got to do all your housework and shit because you don't have any time to do it during the week because you're working eight hours a day. You have to cook. You have to do all this shit. And then you fucking get Saturday off, so that's cleaning or shopping or whatever, you know, or your kid's sports shit. And then you fucking go and you back and start the next on Monday. So Sunday, Sunday night, though, you have a day off on Sunday, but you have to go to bed early on Sunday because you get up early for your job on Monday. Yeah. So you really only get one true day off a week if you work a 40-hour Monday through Friday Friday job. Right. And people don't think about it that way, but it's draconian, okay? Plus, I mean, and so that's been going on for a while, the 40-hour work week thing, right? Sure. But now it's even more draconian because they're like, well, only certain businesses can be open. Right. Right? Right. Restaurants, anybody that works at a restaurant, you're fucked. Anybody that works at a bar, you're fucked. Right. Especially if you live in these certain states, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. You know, and think about how many bars and restaurants there are in this country, Graham. Millions. Millions upon millions. Right. And how many people is that that have been just shoved aside? Mm-hmm. You know, because they're having a problem with unemployment. Unemployment's all fucking backed up. You can't get any money to live. So what do you do? You 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 you, you, you get restless. You're you're 20 years old. You know, you fucking party or you protest. Or you do. I don't know what you do. You know, it's been a long time since I was 20. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I, you, you see though the pattern that we got ourselves into. The that's why they call it the grind. They call it your job. Back in the day, they used to call it the grind. Your job. Yep. yep. You know, because you're only working the pay bills and maybe buy some beers on the weekends and maybe go to a movie or whatever, and then you rack at it on Monday. You only get one day off a week, though. If yeah. you work a 40-hour work week, a, a typical 40-hour work week. Sure. Right. People are like, no, I get I get the weekends off. It's like, okay, so you work Friday till five. He's like, they're like, yeah. So you work Friday, yeah. So you're off Saturday. They're like, yeah, I'm off Saturday. And then you're like, well, but you got to work on Monday, right? And they're like, yeah. So you got to go to bed early on Sunday. See, so really, Sunday is actually a work night, right? Yeah, but Friday's you- not so. Right, Friday night is not. Right, so you go out and party your ass off on Friday night. Right, and, yes. And, and spend all the money you earned that week. <laughs> your extra, after you paid your bills, you might have, maybe take your wife out once a, a month for a nice dinner. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's all you can do, you know, because you got kids that play sports and they they need all the clothes and they, you know, kids need that shit because they grow. Yeah. You know, they all grow their clothes because they're constantly growing. The kid needs shoes. So you, you have to not go on date night because the kid needs shoes. But date night's going to be a thing of the past, too, because guess what? The bars and restaurants, those are a thing of the past. Those are going to be stuff we talk to our grandkids about. Yeah, there used to be a time when people used to gather and they served alcohol and food. They'd be like, really? They'll be like, really? We'll be like, yeah, yeah. And music and live bands. Their eyes will get big. They'll be like, no, really? Yeah. 40 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you might be saying that to your grandkids. I remember we used to be able to go and dance to live music with a live band. Sure. Like, really? They'll be like, really? I'll be like, yep, yep. I was just thinking about that today because I've been watching these World War II movies and stuff and how when I was growing up, I heard the stories of World War II. I heard the stories about Vietnam. I had relatives that were in Vietnam while, you know, while I was alive and it was going on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was three years old. I had two uncles over in Vietnam. But I don't remember. I was three, four. You know what I mean? Right. But I've always heard the World War II stories before that because one of my dad's uncles was shot down. I'm, I've said this before, but he was shot down behind enemy, enemy lines in Germany or France or something. But he was a gunner, you know, that rode in the bubble. He was okay. a gunner. Yeah, that, okay. What, was it B-52, I think? 
All right. But anyway, I heard these stories growing up, right? Yeah. So I, you just learn. You just, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but when you hear about the past, like, I remember, I can't think of many things. I remember telling my kids that we didn't have cell phones when I was growing up. We didn't have computers. And we were, they look at you like, really? Uh, Rob sells you it's a B29 super forecast. Oh, B29. Okay, thanks, Rob. But, yeah, because it was like a crew of, like, seven or eight guys on one plane. And his whole plane got shot down, but they all lived, dude. Yeah. They all got, like, re rescued or whatever. You know, one of those hero stories. You can make a movie out of it, probably. I'm sure it's been done already. <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, there will be concerts. Really? Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, I keep reading. For the few that have yet to be killed. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that there so remain left on this planet as far as human beings go, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, hey, Donna. Just saw your little hello there. Um, it, it's just uh, anyway, right, that, Pat. That, it, it, that, history that, does repeat itself. We've said that so many times. It keeps on, keeps on keeping on, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that other thing you were talking about earlier, how they don't want you to see your family. Uh, I have this little right, thing right. here on okay. RT.com. Don't hug, don't hug grandma this Christmas. Uh, UK Public Health, Health Chief's grim COVID advice for Britain, uh, ready, as, as Britain readies for the festive season. Yep, it says the UK is heading towards a bleak winter as Prime Minister Bojo, uh, his chief scientific advisor on Thursday, warned Britons not to hug and kiss their elderly relatives at Christmas in a bid to protect them from Corona Bologna. Would I encourage someone to hug and kiss their elderly relatives? No, I would not, Professor Chris Whit Whitty said during a Downing Street Corona Bologna briefing and days after the PM had outlined softened softened restrictions uh, for the festival period. Well, softened restriction means they 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 put uh fur fur lining on your on your handcuffs. That's the soft Oh yeah, that'll be kinky. Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's a new twist. That's the softened restrictions. Yeah, that's a new twist. He stressed that while hugging grandparents is technically not against the law. <laughs> Fuck it. No hugging, no kissing, no nothing. It's it's far from advisable amid the ongoing pandemic as young people may be carrying the virus. Yeah, yeah, it's that asymptomatic nonsense. And could transmit it to their more vulnerable family members. Uh, the chief medic's stark warning comes shortly after the UK's health secretary, Mitt Hancock, Matt Hancock, outlined the UK's newly updated three-tier system of coronavirus restrictions. Which, by the way, and I don't, I don't know how it is where you live or not, but what, what are, what are these tiered restrictions? They, they, nothing, none of it makes any sense. You can't follow it. You know, I mean, there's no way to possibly know if you're even following uh, their restrictions, their orders, right. their guidelines, because they make all these things and they conflict with each other. And it's, uh, and it's like they don't want you to know what you're, what, what they don't want you to do. Uh, they, right. They, they. They want to make it impossible to be able to to, to determine what the hell's really going on, it, it, <laughs> and so as they keep pumping out the nonsense, the fake numbers from the bad fake tests on on, on the on this corona crap, um, you know. <laughs> so so they, they give you fake numbers on the case positives. They give you fake numbers on the deaths. Uh, they, 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 yeah. They, they, they made up this six but foot people rule. People believe what they say on the TV, Graham. They believe the mainstream media. The mainstream media puts out the numbers that they, the people give them. They, they, the powers that the leeches that be, tell the media what to say. The media is controlled by the government. Ask any Russian, they'll tell you that. The media is controlled by the fucking government, and people still can't. Except that fact. I don't know why. 
I don't I either. do not get it. How can you not see that? That's right, free and slaved. Turn the clap off. Do right. Not, do I mean, not. use your own brain. I have said this so many times on the show, but people, does, it's, so easy, it's so much easier just to take some talking head's word for it because they look nice in the suit or they got, they're a hot fucking babe woman. Oh, yeah, she's hot. She's telling the truth. Okay, I got news for you. It has nothing to do with fucking looks. And you should know that, too. But people get suckered in by this shit. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, we've been talking about the same thing for over 12 years, bro. Yeah. We All have. right. I let's, mean, let's, do some more, yeah. let's do some more music here. And, okay. Uh, uh, we got more total nonsense when we come back. Yeah, okay, sounds good. <laughs> so much nonsense. <laughs> oh, don't ask me why I like this next song. I just do. It's a young gal by the name of Ivy Levon. It's called Hot Damn. <laughs> you giggly gals. All right, uh, uh, that's uh, Rainadale said there. Um, covering uh, Van Morrison. Yes, Van Morrison. We love Van Morrison uh, even more now that he is an anti-lockdowner uh, singing his uh, Dancing in the Moonlight. Yeah. Uh, before that, we had Gary Clark Jr. If Trouble Was Money. Let me tell you, I would be a rich man if Trouble Was Money. Uh, and we kicked it off there with Ivy Levon singing Hot Damn. And uh, I, 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 don't know, I, I love that song. That's, that's such a great song. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what do you say, Moose? Hey, hey. Hey, oh, that hey. Was good tunes, dude. Yeah, I'm telling you. Very good tunes. Yeah, so, okay, I had to laugh at this, to, or not really laugh. It's it's just sad. Like, it, it's fun when you can laugh. It's good when you can laugh. If you can laugh, do it. Sure. Anyway, um, so apparently there's a divorce going to happen. Or someone wants a separation and a divorce. Or uh, people want a separation and a divorce. Okay. BLM wants to divorce Antifa. Okay. Can you blame yes, them? Yes, they do. No, not really. Okay. Um, this is from RT. Dot com. All right. If, is anyone actually surprised that rioting comrades Antifa and BLM are seeking divorce as racial tensions come to the fore? F O R E? Question mark. After months of carnage in the U.S. cities, tensions are rising between the two main perpetrators, Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Even, what? I'm sorry. Given their different ethnic makeups and agenda, it's a shock that this unholy alliance lasted so long. If there are two organizations that can be held most responsible for the riots that have scarred America throughout 2020, it is Black Lives Matter and Antifa. These, these groups have caused millions upon millions of dollars worth of damage and committed hundreds of crimes in pursuit of what they consider justice. I know the true end game for these groups is not the election of Joe Biden, but I get the sense that they are at least happy that Donald Trump is going to be out of office, barring, in parentheses, barring one of the biggest cases of voter fraud in history. And with that small victory, it would appear that a divorce is underway between the two groups. According to certain sources, there have been tensions for months over Antifa's way of doing things and whether or not this has tainted the protest. I believe it has. After all, when you... That's, that's just my, my two cents. After all, when you start lighting cities on fire across the nation, it's pretty safe to assume that people are going to stop listening. You go from being someone with something to say to someone intent on destruction. Hardly the best way to get a point across. There are also uh, there are also issues over authenticity. Some BLM activists are pointing out that many of the members of Antifa are white and quote unquote privileged. Uh, you have, and the Antifa groups are digging through social media trying to cancel social justice protesters. 
So it seems like Antifa is too white and too rich for BLM taste, and some organizers in BLM aren't pure enough for Antifa. As (laughs) someone who has seen both of these groups do what they can do to damage this country, it's hard not to laugh as I watch this all play out, mostly because it's entirely predictable if you understand the reality of the situation. On one side, there are Black Lives Matter organizers with skeletons in their closet. On the flip side, Antifa's demographic tends to be rather similar to a Ku Klux Klan meeting. These issues have been pointed out over the course of months. Many people on social media have seen videos of mostly white crowds made up of, made up of Antifa supporters chanting BLM slogans. The irony of the situation is that they're usually chanting them at someone who is not white. And for all their supposed attempts at seeking justice, all they have managed to do so far is light fires as another old white white guy who was nominated by the Democrats. In a sense, all of it was going to take all it was going to take was time for these groups to actually look at one another and realize there is no natural fit. But that's the funny part. Both of these groups are doomed to fail because they do not seek anything positive. They say that they do, but their actions speak louder than words. You cannot claim justice you cannot claim to want justice for one group while committing injustices toward another and expect people to pay attention. The bitter irony, two groups say that they are battling for racial justice are dividing among racial lines. If the irony were any more delicious, you could serve it up as a Thanksgiving dessert. And that's from RT by a writer named Micah Curtis. Great. That was good. That's good stuff. I mean, yeah. <laughs> These are confused motherfuckers that are out there just jumping on a bandwagon, like I've been saying, you know? Right. They don't even know what they're supporting or what they're doing. They just jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. You know? Fuck fuck 12. And, like, you guys don't even know what the fuck you're doing. Right. You're confused. Very. And, and Let's go destroy this monument. Oh, yeah, Abraham Lincoln. He was a dickhead. Oh, yeah, George Washington. He was a dickhead. Let's just talk. Top, tossle these volumes down and throw red paint on them or whatever. Oh, they, 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 oh yeah, that that proves a lot there. They they tear down statues of their own heroes. Right. It's like, what the fuck are you people doing? You're not thinking correctly. <laughs> You're fucking confused. Is it any wonder? Uh, <laughs> no. No. Okay. So anyway, uh, <laughs> speaking of confused and people saying one thing when when it's their what their meaning is the actual opposite of that um, comes this Cuomo calls a sheriff who won't enforce a mask mandate a dictator Cuomo imposed a mask <laughs> mandate Cuomo imposed a mask mandate like a dictator and some a sheriff dictator. And two some, words uh, dictator. Yeah, yeah dictator. and some sheriff said, "The hell is that? I'm not enforcing your mask mandate." And he calls that sheriff for not enforcing his dictator words a dictator. <laughs> yeah. So New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, what a scumbag, re- responded angrily Monday to sheriffs in the state who said they would not be enforcing Corona Bologna restrictions that limit indoor gatherings, including during the upcoming holidays. Sheriffs in four New York counties said last week on social media that they would not, not be enforcing the Corona Bologna rules. And they're not even really rules or whatever. They're dictator words. Uh, claiming that their jurisdiction does not apply inside people's homes, and that the orders were not constitutionally defensible. Uh, This is an emotional time, uh, political time. Everybody wants their own strongly held, has their own strongly held opinions. Rights, you have a strongly held opinion that that says Corona is an overreaction, is all is an overreaction. It's a hoax. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not following these rules. You have sheriffs upstate who said, I'm not going to enforce the law. Of course, it's not a law. Uh, Cuomo, Cuomo Clown, said during a meeting, I believe that law enforcement, get out of my way, I believe that law enforcement officer violates his or her constitutional duty. 
by protecting, by by defending the Constitution, he's violating his or her constitutional duty. No, you're the one. You fucking Cuomo, you're the one that's violating your constitutional duty. I don't consider them law enforcement officer because you don't have the right to pick laws, again, not laws, that you think you will enforce and you don't have laws that you don't agree with. Right. That's not a law enforcement officer. That's a dictator, he added. It's like, do you even hear the words coming out of your own mouth? No, he doesn't. I, 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 I just... I, I, it's like Newsom, the same way with Newsom, dude. These guys are like clones. Cuomo and Newsom are like uh, clones. Seriously. <laughs> and your fucking lovely, ML, notorious MLG down with oh, the Nazi Mexico. Yeah. God. And you got, wall, you got walls in Minnesota, you got Evers in Wisconsin, but Evers gets keep shot and getting shot down by the Wisconsin Supreme Court. But yet businesses are still following his order, right? Right. And it's just like, come on. I mean, and okay, so my point when I was going to call into Clyde this week, uh-huh. I was going to say, dude, because he was talking about Corona, like Gulag or Gestapo, you know what I mean, or Stasi. Which is the Stasi was the Nazi police, right? Right. And, okay, so in Minnesota and Wisconsin, for instance, you got the St. Croix River. I I live on the western part of Wisconsin. I mean, yeah, the western part of Wisconsin, which I'm 90 miles from Minneapolis-St. Paul area, which is in Minnesota, obviously. Right. So I am basically, I'm probably out of those 90 miles. 60 of those are Wisconsin, okay? The other 30, or no, actually 70 of those miles are Wisconsin probably, give or take. You know what I mean? Right, right. The rest is Minnesota. So anyway, um, the only, if, if they were to do border checkpoints, they'd have to have a checkpoint at that bridge there that goes over the river between Wisconsin and Minnesota up on I-94, Mm-hmm. And I, I, I would believe that what what they would do and how it would go down, it would be like, have you seen any World War II movies where they put up checkpoints? Sure. Um, and ask you papers, where are you going, what are you doing, what, you know what I mean? They search your vehicle and make sure you don't got no Jews in there. I mean, I could see it going down like this, that they'll allow semis and delivery trucks to get through. You know what I mean? They'll still have stopped them. But in order to travel between the states, mm-hmm. you're gonna have some special. You're gonna need some special kind of pass, motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. it, you're gonna need a pass that says you're allowed to be across the border into another state for a certain amount of time. If you do not come back within that certain amount of time, you're gonna be on a bolo, which is be on the lookout, so they can arrest your ass for violating your time. On your pass. Right. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is how bad it could get. Because, And the sad part is, a lot of people live in western Wisconsin, but work in Minnesota because there's more job opportunities there. So if you do this, you know, so you might have to have a pass for your job, right? Let's say you live in fucking River Falls, but you work at 3M in St. Paul. Okay. Okay? It's like a 40-minute drive. Yeah. Okay. Right. You're gonna need a pass. You're gonna have to stop at the checkpoint, show that you're you're supposed to be traveling through, into the Minnesota from Wisconsin every day. Right. You know. Right. And that's how it that's how it was. That's what they did in Nazi Germany. Yeah. Yeah. And so I can see this coming down like that. You know what I'm saying? Because that Saint Croix River there at Hud, between Hudson and and Stillwater, or the Hudson and the other side. Right. Which is basically Woodbury or whatever. Um, it's a huge bridge, dude. Like, it's a big expanse. It's like a mile, probably. You know, I don't know, maybe not a mi- less than a mile, but it's a big bridge. Yeah. You know, and they're going to make it a real pain in the ass to travel. You're going to have to prove why you're going to a certain place. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure, yeah. And that's how it was in Nazi Germany. And they're doing the same playbook, dude. I, seriously, girl, I remember saying this 10 years ago. I remember typing in the chat and talking about the Nazi playbook as being reenacted 
it's just the technology's gotten better. You oh, know, yeah. so they can fucking scan your eyeball or scan your fingerprint or, you know what I mean? Sure. Or scan a see if you have a chip. You know, it's getting, it's getting like fifth elementy here. You know what I mean? It's oh, getting kind of so. sci-fi, you know, like. That's right. We're all, we're all meat popsicles. It's getting kind of Terminator-like. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know about Terminator, but um, def- def- definitely fifth element. Yeah, definitely, because <laughs> they're talking about flying cars now. Yeah, you know, yeah, I will. Yeah. I want to, but the, the, okay. So they say that it's a flying car, but it looks like a fucking plane. Yeah, okay? it's a plane. It's not a car. So basically, it's a plane, but with car controls. <laughs> That's how I'm envisioning it. I don't know, but wouldn't that be fucking cool? A flying car. A real, a real flying car. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine when this technology first comes out? It's going to be like when the car first came out, because there was like, pe- most people use horse and buggy, right? Right. So then the cars come out, and there's no room for the cars, the horses, and the buggies. So it was a hard transition there. You know, like, oh, I'm sure. For a, a couple of decades, probably. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I did see that in Florida, they um, have... They're going to be testing these these uh, flying cars. Did I? Did we talk about this last week? No, I think we just talked in the chat about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they put an airport up in Florida. They're going to. Right. And they're going to be testing these uh, these car uh, aviation facility. They're calling it. But they're going to be testing these flying cars. In Florida, and this is HuffPost. Let me get a better link. I don't want a HuffPost link. Fuck you, HuffPost. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And so, anyway, um, yeah, the, the, it's going to be built near Orlando. Okay. And it's going to be like a test facility for these flying cars, dude. Sure. I mean,. But again. It's called the Jetsons. It's called, oh my God, it's yeah, happening. It's yeah. called, I saw flying cars in the fifth element. Like Bruce Willis drove like a flying taxi, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, it's really cool, you know. Of course, they, they need to come up with anti-gravity first. Well, yeah, they're going to have, I mean, can you imagine the accidents and the uh, with these flying cars? People drive regular cars like shit. You think they're going to drive flying cars any better? Uh, oh, hell no. no. <laughs> oh, hell no. But oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's not a car. You can't drive that on the freeway. No, uh, it's uh, it, you're in the air. Right. I mean, uh, and so uh, you know, calling it a car, I uh, might as well call a Cessna a car. You know. Right. Exactly. I mean, <sighs> they're not. They look like planes, but they're calling them flying cars. Yeah, so, so I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I would assume that, like, if we get to the fifth element level. Like, there will be technology, like, anti-crash technology. Like, you won't even be piloting it yourself. You can put it on autopilot. Pilot. You can just program your destination. Yeah. And it just fucking goes there, right? And, and they'll, they'll have certain lanes you can fly in in the sky. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that will be cool. That will be cool. But that probably won't be available to people like us, dude. Well, not in our lifetime. I... It'll be like owning a Cadillac, like or buying a fucking Cadillac Escalade or some or a Chevy Suburban, cash up front. A Ferrari. And not just the not just the base model. You got to go up a couple models, you know. And so you're shelling out eighty grand. Easy, yeah. For a fucking Chevy yeah. Suburban. I, 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 I would say three hundred grand for one of those. Yeah. For the flying car? Yeah, yeah, three hundred. Yeah, grand. exactly. It, it will be. Yeah. yeah. So then, what's going to happen is you'll have these companies pop up that will be like Uber, but they'll be flying cars. Right. You know, I mean, they're already saying you, people can go to Mars or something. You know. Well, would yeah. you sign up for that group? I wouldn't at my age, but if you were twenty, would you sign up to fly to Mars? No, it'll be you... all freaking militarized and shit. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, it's not gonna be like just get to go and live there and 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 be yourself. That, were be you a, kind of like a? Were you a? Well, I know you like Star Trek and Star Wars and shit and sci-fi in general. Yeah. 
So I guess I don't even need to ask the question. <laughs> You're well, like a sci-fi geek. <laughs> or a sci-fi oh nerd. no, not really. I mean, I, I like those shows. Uh, I yeah. enjoyed them. Uh, um, Battlestar Galactica, not the not the original one, but the one they remade in right nineties. Uh, uh, yeah, that that was really good. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it, it well, I know you like Planet of the Apes, and that's sci-fi, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's Planet of the Apes I like. And Star Wars, you liked, right? Yeah, Star Wars is whatever. I mean, oh come on! No, I'm serious. I I didn't watch all those freaking Star Wars. Well, yeah, Wars you movies. were a little. You're seven years older, so. I mean, I watched. When I saw Star I, Wars, I, it was seventy six. No, 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 no. Uh, the, the original Star Wars, I I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, the original. Uh, yeah, and, and the second one was all right, and the third one was better than the second one, not as good as the first. But Empire then, Strikes Back. I like the one. But, that but then when they Yoda. came, they, when they yep. came out with. You know the 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 prequels. The newer there. one, right? Yeah. I have not seen any of those. I watched that one with freaking Jar Jar Banks, and I was like, "Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell is this?" That's <laughs> like that's like Matt's favorite one out of God. all of them. Upa tupa tapa tay. Yeah. <laughs> Shut oh the hell up. Yeah, I because when you're old school like us. Yeah. Like, you remember the original, it was 1976, all of a sudden they come out with these new Star Wars with all this new technology, and you're like, this don't look like the real the original, you know what I mean? You're like, I saw this in 76, and now you're coming out in the 2000s with fucking new ones, or the late, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just, you know what I mean? The younger ages, like my boys, really are into Star Wars, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like they did the remake like 20 years after we, or 30 years after we did it. You know what I mean, Grim? Right. For some reason. I don't know. Like, I find it fishy, too. Uh, and then, then freaking Disney bought it anyway, so screw them. Right, yeah. And then <laughs> I remember making this comment that usually movies or whatever, it's the same premise, okay? Yeah. Like Star Wars, light versus dark. Basically. Yeah, yeah. The light yeah. side versus dark and then you have Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. dark versus evil. It's always that concept. Avatar, same thing. You know what I mean? That premise of movie. Yeah. It's been way overused. You know. Yeah, Donna, you young thing. <laughs> See, she wasn't born until seventy-six. Uh, so. Um, <laughs> okay, Donna. Well, so, I'm about 11 years older than you. So she, she, didn't, she, she didn't get to see them all first round in the, in the theater. Yeah. Oh, Disney, dude, was evil. Disney's still evil, dude. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, but when you see, okay, Disney is an interesting story because you go back to the 1940s after World War II, okay, mm-hmm, 1946. Mm-hmm. And Walt Disney... Was a cartoonist, a draw. He could draw. He was, you know, he could yeah, do voices sure. and stuff. Right. And but he was like a Nazi, like a Nazi, a communist. You know, he was like a Nazi friend, Nazi friendly. You know, whatever they call yeah, it. You was, know, he was an anti-Jew. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so, if you remember right, though, 1945 was when World War II ended, right? Yeah. Okay. Operation Paperclip. When did that take place? 1945. Right. And so what Operation Paperclip is, is the new, the uh, Nazi repro, uh, re, relocation. Re, relocation program without any comp, in, no, no legal charges on you. You're free, right? Mm-hmm. And that started from the, in 1945. Well, so you got good old Walt, you know, and he, he, it, it, he he did propaganda for the Nazis and for the U.S. He made propaganda movies for both sides. I sure, believe. sure. And um, now, now um, isn't he frozen somewhere? Yeah, he's one of the ones that got what do they call it? Cryogenic. Uh, cyber, Cry- cybergenic. Yeah, Cry- he's frozen cryo- supposedly. Cryogenic. So he might not even be truly dead. Right. They'll bring him back someday. <laughs> yeah, like Han Solo. They they can put him into a, one of his little animatronic things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, though, there's this more. Than, Walt Disney's not the only one that's fucking. Uh, oh no, no, of course not. No, they've saved. They they got a bunch of them. 
That was a few Which weirdos. Which is scary. It's big about you, and I don't want no fucking Hitler coming back to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I can't. I'm just when you're ready to die, just go. Right. Just go. But I think Hitler lived to be in, in the into the seventies, nineteen seventies. Yeah. Everyone, all the history books say, oh yeah, the Allied forces won. They defeated Hitler. They killed him in, in his bunker. Yeah, with him his and girlfriend. Abraham, that's not what happened. No, right, they right. they smuggled Hitler out a week before the the war ended. Ten which, days, I think it was. Which before. why? It's not like he was any. He went down to Argentina. Yeah, no, but the, I, the Nazis had an enclave there, and they still have it. It's still there. It's not. It's not like he was a military genius or any other kind of genius. Nope. Nope. So why, why save his ass? I, I can't imagine. The, the, because he was Nazi. They're loyal to the party, dude. Yeah. And and they still had. Connections in the U.S. because of NASA, Werner von Braun, who was in Operation Paperclip. You look up all these other fucking Nazis that they fucking saved, mm -hmm. and 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 they they killed many fucking people, dude. They sent people to their deaths, like thousands upon <laughs> thousands of people. But yet they get asylum in the U.S. because they were worried about the Russians developing nukes. Right? Uh, I guess so, that yeah. That was the excuse they gave to shelter these Nazis. Sure. And if you think about NASA, Nazi, yeah, it's one yeah. letter. I mean, it's two letter, you know. Well, whatever. It's just, you know, acronyms. So. Right. Um, yeah, aggressive. Okay, I don't know if I sound aggressive. That's no, not you. He's, he's, not talking about, he's not talking about you, I don't think. He's no. About, he's talking about other people in the chat there. Oh, Okay. So, okay. Whatever. I, I it's Night, hard for me to read the chat while I'm talking and doing the show. You know, it's like yeah. I mean, I can multitask really good, but you know, yeah. sometimes I get going in the what I'm saying. I don't look at the chat for five minutes. You know, it's like, I understand. Especially when I'm reading an article or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah sure. But anyway, if you guys are, I mean, this is part of the reason I've been in the history for my whole life is because I want to know why shit happens, why shit. <laughs> goes down the way it did. When I first learned about the Holocaust and all that, the history of that, I was horrified, dude. Sure, who wouldn't be? I was a huge I was a huge reader. I was I had a college level vocabulary when I was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I read like a fucking fiend. Yeah. So I knew I when I found out about the history of what happened, I was I was seriously fucking disgusted. I I, I didn't even like when I read the diary of Anne Frank. Mm-hmm. That hit me hard, you know, because she was the same age I was when yeah. I read that book. So, so you related. Yeah. I, I tried to put myself in her shoes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that really hit me hard. And then I delved more into that history of that. And then I was in the Vietnam War because I had relatives. And my dad was active Vietnam era, and then I had my two uncles actually went to Nam, you know what I mean? So that had interest. I had interest there. And then, of course, I was always been a history buff. And then we went on this vacation to South Carolina to visit my my oldest uncle, my mom, my old, mom's oldest brother. And I was like 13 or 14, and I just it it was all that Civil War stuff down there. Right. And I just started delving into the Civil War. There, <laughs> it's just like, but you can learn so much. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah. So I've always been into history and why shit goes down the way it does and it's definitely repeating itself i feel that big time right now sure i feel that feeling like history is definitely repeating itself only to a bigger degree right and the technology is better like their technology got better so they can like scan you with your eyeballs now or something you know what i mean oh, they, they do all kinds of stuff man you know. yeah they Put that 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 brain reading uh, chip into your brain, right? You know, I, it's just really like insane. I mean, yeah, I mean, it wasn't just like people. I hate that when people get fixated on the the Holocaust when they talk about just the Jew part. Like, I get that. That was horrific. The labor right. camps, the gas chambers, the ovens, all of that is horrible. Okay. Sure. But then you had people that helped the Jews. And yeah. they were put in the labor camps, too. 
You know what I mean? I mean, it wasn't just Jews that were in them labor camps. No. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because people were trying to fight. They were in, there was a thing called the resistance. It was a real thing that happened. Sure. You know, people started to fight back. Okay? And it helped to end the war. Yeah. Um, I watched this story or a movie tonight. It was about a three-year-old boy got smuggled into a labor camp at Buchenwald in a suitcase, right? Mm-hmm. And so it was like 12 weeks away from the war ending, right? Yeah. And so they harbored this kid and kept him safe and everything for that 12 weeks. And then do my research? Okay. All right. I will. I always do research all the time. So look up whoever that guy is, Leo Frank. Okay. But anyway, um, I saw the pictures, dude. Okay. I saw the pictures of the holes that they dug and threw the fucking bodies in. Okay? Those are real pictures. And Frank's diary might be fake, but that doesn't take away from what happened during the Holocaust. Okay? Yeah, I consider that more of a novel. Right. I mean, you, it wasn't just my... I was 12 or 13 when I read that book, dude. So I was a child. Okay? Mm-hmm. And since then, I've done a lot more research on World War II since then. So, whatever. Anyway. Um, just, just, just a point that mm-hmm. uh, watching the History Channel does not count as research. No, watch. No, that's not right. <laughs> that's a, no. That's, that, that's a bunch of fake data info right there. Yeah, big time. Yeah. I mean, some of their... I'm not saying I've never watched a History Channel show, Grim, because I have watched a few. Sure. Except one of the Vikings was okay. I mean, but some of the, some of them are... You have to question it, because it just goes by what the books say. You know, the right. what we were taught in school and everything. Right, right. It's not always accurate or the truth. Yeah. Come on, Moose, do your research. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, let's play some more music. All right, let's do that. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna kick her off over here today. Or right now with this uh with uh sock puppet request. Oh R I P Yep, rip sock. We miss you man, we miss you. Enjoy this out there wherever in the ether. Yep. Yep. Otis Rush and Eric Clapton. Alright, alright, alright. That was uh Doyle Bramhall too. With uh, some peep girls named Wendy and Lisa doing a track called Pusher Man. That was a sock puppet request there. Uh, before that, gang band rockabilly. Uh, I dig them. They're, they're so uh, different. They're like a, a Slavic uh, rockabilly band. Um, gang band rockabilly doing, uh, well, Johnny B. Good and Blue Suede Shoes, but they call it Johnny Blue and Johnny Blue Good Shoes. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, we kicked it off with Otis Rush and Eric Clapton. Hey, another lockdowner or anti-lockdowner, Eric Clapton, uh, doing all your loving, Miss Lovin', yeah. So good jams, good jams. There, no, not the Pusher Man, just Pusher Man. Uh, but uh, yeah, Doyle, Doyle, big, 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 yep, yep, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. One of Sock's favorites. Absolutely. Yeah, we love you, Sock. We miss you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Hope you're having a good time uh, up there yeah. and wherever you Standing are. Standing with Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah. I can picture it. I can see it. Sure. It's happening. It's happening. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm convinced it is. I mean, that's what I want to think, so. Yeah, no, no doubt. Why not? Why not? He can do whatever he wants now where he's at, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, and he'll probably come back in the reincarnation. You know, I believe in reincarnation, so. Okay. You know, not everybody does, but I do. And, you know, it's just, you know. Um, that's why I call myself agnostic, because I like aspects of a lot of different religions, you know. Okay, but uh, agnostic means... Like you are accepting, I don't know how to explain. It just means you I, don't I, know. It means you don't know. You're not right. I believe in a higher power, but you yeah. know, I just I I I like nature based stuff. That's I relate to that. 
I mean, I don't, I don't want to talk about religion because that's not really what we talk about on here. All right, so you're more of a druid. Yep, yeah. yep. Like more of my ancestral ways, you know, uh, my history of my people and how old <laughs> we used to do things back in the day before it was all taken over. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Don has got a great idea there. Come back as a pecan tree so motherfuckers can eat my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sock. That would be a good one for sock. Yeah, if you wanted to be a tree, that would be a good, good tree to be. <laughs> Definitely. Eat my nuts, bitches. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, right. uh, what? go ahead. I was just saying earlier, you, you brought up the uh, New Mexico or uh, Nazi. Nazi Mex- Mexico. Na- That's Nazi my Mex- new nickname for your sacrum. The, the, the Nazi, Nazi Mexico Mex- governor, uh, yeah. uh, Michelle Lujan. But Gris. don't feel bad. I live in Weimar, Wisconsin. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, so. W words. So, so Michelle Lujan Grisham, that's her. Yeah, so the here, notorious MLG. The notorious MLG. Yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> so the NM governor shuts down grocery stores for two weeks. The headline sounds worse than it is. But. Oh, wonderful. Well, okay, people are going to start freaking out when you get that headline, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, this is on the Washington Examiner. All right, so a dozen grocery stores around the state have been forced to close. Not all the grocery stores like the headline sounds, but no, a dozen grocery stores <laughs> around the state have been forced to close for two weeks because of a public health order issued by MLG at a time when the state's residents are suffering, as they are, from record high unemployment and food insecurity. The order requires businesses with four or more rapid responses of uh, corona bologna cases uh, reported within a 14-day period to close for two weeks. And I think a rapid response just means they had somebody that had corona there, which I I don't know how that's a rapid response, but that's what they're calling it. Anyway, so, so more than 25 essential businesses, as if all businesses were not essential, uh, more than 25 essential businesses were shut down as of Monday afternoon, including a number of grocery stores and major retailers. The closures, which include two Walmarts in Albuquerque and one in Santa Fe, and Albertsons in Roswell, Smith's Food and Drug uh, in Albuquerque, and New Mexico Food Distribution Center, which is for the poor and the homeless, uh, in Albuquerque. They shut down the, the, the place for the poor and the homeless to go to get their food. Uh, uh, anyway, so the state's environment department has published a complete list of businesses that have been closed due to employees testing positive for the Corona Bologna, as well as a watch list and a FAQ fact about the watch list. So access to purchase food is now limited because of another order issued by the Grosvenor uh, requiring capacity limitations at all stores. Oh, it's lovely. Uh, places like Costco can only have 75 people in the store at once, which means that there's a huge long line of people standing outside, not wearing masks and not social distancing because they're not allowed in the store because of the limitation set by the idiot governor. Uh, New Mexicans are now waiting outside, standing in line for up to two hours. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, MLG's office said... The state is not forcing anyone to stand in a crowded line. No, uh, they just there to get their food or whatever. You're not forcing them to stand there. They just got no food at home. Duh. All right, so uh, uh, John Block at Pinion, Pinion Post says the governor's office claims are untrue and easily disprovable. Uh, he posted photos of New Mexicans waiting in long lines outside of grocery stores with dates and time stamps. The photos were taken between November 13th and November 23rd. Upon news that limits of 75 people inside each store, retailers preemptively began limiting capacities to begin compliance with the mandate. That's enough of that. There's plenty more to this story, but that's enough of that. Um... (laughs) So, yeah, wherever you happen to live, if you think your state is 
uh, acting uh, Nazi-esque. Come on down to New Mexico. Oh, yeah, but once you get here, you'll have to self-quarantine for two weeks. So you better have a good lot of cash because hotels are not cheap. And that's where you're going to have to stay. <laughs> but if you've got enough money, if you have enough money, maybe you could just get the hell out. Because according to this article here on ZeroHedge.com, rich Americans are scrambling to buy golden passports. You don't like a golden ticket. Um, <laughs> golden passports <laughs> to a second country. Yeah, rich Americans. That's not me. It's probably not you. I know it's not me. I'm Anyway, uh, wealthy Americans are rushing to secure second passports as a growing club of individuals. And you ain't in the club. Uh, a growing club of individuals have begun participating in government programs abroad which allow foreigners to acquire them. Not cheaply, though. Um, Eric Schmidt acquired all the typical trappings of a mega-rich U.S. citizen, a super yacht, a Gulfstream jet, a Manhattan penthouse. One of his newest assets is far less conventional, a second passport. Alphabet Inc., that's Google, a uh, former chief executive officer, applied to become a citizen of Cyprus, uh, according to an uh, announcement last month with the Cypriot newspaper. Uh, that was first reported by the website Red Code, or Recode. Uh, according to the report, Americans rarely sought to buy so-called golden passports in prior years, with such programs historically appealing to people from countries with far fewer travel freedoms than the U.S., such as China, Pakistan, and Nigeria. Uh, we haven't seen the likes of this before, said Patty Bluer, a London-based citizenship and residency advisor, advisory director at Henley & Partners, uh, the dam actually burst, and we didn't realize it. At the end of last year, it just continued getting stronger. A second passport can be had for as little as $100,000 and include potential benefits such as lower taxes, greater investment freedom, and hassle-free travel. Uh, so Americans are thinking, I want to have that ability to move as quickly as possible and not be stuck. Another factor stoking interest is the prospect of President Biden uh, and a flipped Senate in January resulting in massive tax hikes on the wealthy, uh, or pretty much on everybody. Uh, they, they say you're not wealthy. You don't have to worry if you don't make 400 grand or more. They're lying. They're lying! <laughs> Others are securing passports out of fear of social unrest, according to Apex Capital Partners, which says its clients have increased 650% since the November 3rd election. We're seeing this interest from Americans who are all saying the same things that Chinese or Middle Eastern or Russian clients are saying, according to Apex founder Nuri Katz. They're saying... We're not leaving the U.S. right now, but we're concerned and we want to have something else just in case. So screw you little people. Screw you plebs. Screw you. You don't have the money for a second passport. You probably don't have the money for a first passport. <laughs> and you got no way of getting out. They're not going to let you out. They don't want you out. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so you got your second passport there, Moose? No, I don't have any passport. I have no passport. Uh, okay. okay. I've never had a passport. I never needed one before. And I've been to Canada many times. I've been to Puerto Rico. I didn't need, I've been to Jamaica. I didn't need a passport. So, um... Yeah, vagina. I pee out of my vagina. I mean, it's the, ure it's the urethra tube. You know, there's more than one hole in your vagina. I'm well aware of my fucking anatomy, cunt. <laughs> well, you're you're one of the special. I'm sorry. I don't like antagonizers while I'm doing my show, dude. You're one of the special ones. Like, what the fuck? You know, come on now. 
Now, there's, there, there's a vid, there's a video I'm going to put into the post show blog. I'm not going to play it on here because it's well, I don't I don't feel like doing it uh, on here. Uh, but it's called, and this is more for me than anybody else. But uh, it, it's called <laughs> people who like to be alone have these twelve special personality traits. So I'll just leave that. I'll just leave that there for you. <laughs> I'll put it. I'll put it into the blog. Well, I'll, I'll throw the link into the chat there. But um, <laughs> yeah, we we have we, we have special personality traits. A dozen of them. <laughs> do you like to be alone, Moose? You do. I know. I do. I like to be alone. Yeah. Okay. I mean, alone. What do you mean by alone? Like alone? Like I mean, like I have kids. They aren't always with me, and my dog's always with me, so I'm never really alone. Okay. I mean. Okay. Well, I'll put that vid into the post show blog, but there's a link. Anybody wants to bookmark it for whatever. Um, I, I just put it in there because you know, it's me. So, ain't I special? All right. <laughs> <laughs> This is a slightly older article going all the way back to July. It's on the, the new American dot com. UN backed Great Reset to Usher in New World Order. Yep. So uh are you ready? Get ready. Are you ready? Get ready. Fuck, yeah. I've been getting ready for this for a while. Fuck, we started talking about this when we started doing this show 12 years ago. Well, this says, get ready for a lot less freedom and prosperity and a lot more government. At least if the elitists get their way after peddling coronavirus lockdown. Like I said, this is from July. So after peddling coronavirus lockdowns that crushed the economy and funding riots that terrorized the public under the guise of fighting systemic racism, deep state globalists are stepping in to offer their proposed solution to the crisis they themselves unleashed, created, then unleashed. A great reset to transform the world and everything in it supposedly for the benefit of the masses, but really for the benefit of them, the Rothschild's gang and their ilk. Top leaders of big business, big globalism, and big government worldwide, including royalty and mass-murdering communist tyrants, are jumping on the bandwagon. But even before the scheme is fully outlined and understood, resistance is growing quickly. The brainchild of World Economic Forum, and we've talked about that much recently... Oh, yeah, claim my winnings, you betcha. Um, <laughs> a globalist group of powerful deep state elitists that meet every year in the Swiss ski resort town of Davos, the Great Reset aims to fundamentally re-engineer industry, societies, education, agriculture, and more. Quit moving around on me here. All right, um... Well, see, now I lost my spot. Oh, there we are. Its advocates are openly saying as much. With WEF boss Klaus Schwab declaring all aspects of our society and economies need to be revamped, even if our thinking and behavior will have to dramatically shift. He said a WEF statement uh, marketing, marketing the controversial scheme also calls for a New social contract. Well, I'll tell you right now, centered on social justice. So social justice warriors, it's their moment, I guess. Um, I, I, I never signed a social contract of any kind, and I don't plan to. Every country from the U.S. to China must participate, must participate. And in every industry from oil to gas tech must be transformed added Schwab, calling for even stronger and more effective government. Effective government? There's an oxymoron for you. Uh, we must build entirely new foundations for our economic and social systems, and there is no other choice 
but to submit. Submit! <laughs> well, he, he and others declared. The video about the looming Great Re Reset, which is a video in this article, um, stupid chat thing scrolling around on me, uh, st the Great Reset offers a creepy glimpse into what the globalists are selling. And I would recommend that you go ahead and watch this this uh, video that's in here. Do I have to say more? Do I have to say more? I don't have to say more. You all know. You all know! <laughs> okay, I just want to say, I said earlier that I do not watch TV. I might have made a typo, but I did say, like, it, I typed can instead of can't. Oh. Or I don't instead of do or something. I don't know. But I do not fucking watch TV. I do not believe the mainstream media. You are you read that wrong because I have been on mainstream media for a very fucking long time. Yeah. If you don't know that, you haven't been listening to our soul long enough. So I really have to, had to say something about that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I do not like assumptions ever. I fucking hate assumptions so fucking bad. Like, I can't even tell you. It's up yeah. there with lying, man. Yeah, it's, that, it's, it. it's that old odd couple thing. Yep. When you make assumptions, you make an ass out of you and me. And me. Right. right. Exactly. So, so if, if you had, if you, I mean, why would you, never mind, I don't want to get into it. Go on, Grim. <laughs> uh I'm I'm so glad I don't live in Britain. They're, they're, they're so fucked up over there. But not that not that all this isn't coming here, but it's going on there now. Um, and here it is. Government spies are tracking Brits' movements to check if they are complying with the lockdown. The uh, GCHQ spooks are monitoring the movement of British people by uh, minute by minute to ch minute by minute, second by second, step by step, to check if they are complying with government restrictions, according to reports. Uh, the London Telegraph, which has a paywall on it, you can't read the article unless you pay them, which, of course, pfft. Anyway, reports that spies from Britain's most secretive intelligence and security organization Government Communication Headquarters, that's GCHQ, have embedded a cell within number 10 Downing Street in order to provide Prime Minister Bojo with real-time information pertaining to the public's movements. The Daily Mail also reports on the development, which notes that GCHQ normally tasked with spying on terrorists, which if you're not complying with the lockdown, you're a terrorist, and foreign powers has been turned on the British public to gauge whether people are following the corona shit rules or not. The report notes that as well as tracking the movement of people, the spies are collecting information on internet searches for holidays and jobs. So if you're looking for where you can buy a big turkey, they're coming for you. If you're looking for a job, apparently they're coming for you. Uh, a source told the Telegraph that spying is aiding better policy making. Really? Uh, concerning the Corona Bologna planned endemic, and will be used in order to make decisions on whether the lockdown will be extended beyond December 2nd. It will. Even though Johnson insisted it definitely wouldn't. It definitely will. The report also claims that the GCHQ has collected all information from the maligned Track and Trace app and is ensuring that it is anonymized like hell it is. They know exactly who you are. So it cannot be accessed by hostile states. You are a hostile state to your own people. What do you mean cannot be accessed by hostile states? Uh, the spy agency also is... Uh, being employed to combat anti-vaccination conspiracy theories being spread on social media. That's right. If you're anti-vax, then you're a conspiracy theorist, and you will be dealt with in Room 101. Room 101. You all know that room. 
don't you? <laughs> Speaking anonymously to the London Times earlier this month, a source noted that GCHQ has been told to take out anti-vaxxers online and on social media. Take them out! There are ways we have used to monitor and disrupt terrorist propaganda. Anti-vaxxer, terrorist propaganda. Anti-lockdown, terrorist propaganda. Okay, let me see what's going on over here. You remember room 222, but in 1984, it was room 101. That was your little re-education room. Get you to comply. They're still going to kill you after they get you to admit that that whatever the government says is true, whether or not your eyes tell you differently. But yeah, they're still going to kill you after that. <laughs> Room 222, that was like a TV show, right? Some kind yeah, of, it was a TV show back in the late 70s or something. Some kind of school it, school thing. Yeah, it was a school thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, All we're right. showing our age by even fucking knowing that fact. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot for uh, bringing back that fucking memory. <laughs> so happy that you made me point out my fucking age, cunt. <laughs> well, and so that's my new word, Graham. My son had, Matt asked me the other day. He's like, "What? Where does this cunt word come?" I'm like, "Dude, look it up. That word goes back to the fucking 1600s, dude, at least." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like vagina. It's like pussy. Cunt. Okay. Touch the C instead of the P. There you go. Get but used it, to it. But it, but it's a dirtier version of pussy. Cunny, pussy, cunny, cunt. Yeah, it's the same thing. It all means the same thing. Whatever. That's another slang for vagina. You know, like you got dick, shaft, rod, bat for dick, you know, for penis. Well, yeah. you know, pussy has a lot of nicknames too. Oh, and sure. Is a nickname for pussy. Okay? <laughs> so, and it used to be used a lot in England. Basically, cunt or cunny is what they use in place of pussy. Here in the United States, okay? Yeah, it can also be. Or whatever the fuck, you know. It, it Come on, al- people. Grow the fuck up. Seriously. All right. Let's grow up. You got something to say to me while I'm doing my show? You want to antagonize me while I'm doing a broadcast while you're in chat? You know what? You need to grow a pair and do a fucking show yourself. Otherwise, you ain't got anything to hold water in, dude. All That's right. all I'm saying. All you fucking um, criticizers and all this shit, you can fuck off because you're not doing your own show. If you were, if you were, you might have room to talk. But since you are not doing your own show, you have no room to talk at all. All right, let's talk about this. If you want to antagonize in the chat, I dare you. Broadcast it, cunt. Broadcast. (laughs) Go for it. Have right. fun with it. All right. Well, we're getting ready to do a set here, so. All right. So, take that, cunt. Oh. <laughs> Whoever. Nice. Nice. Oh, God. That this was a good a, piece. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, yeah. This is a uh, Chloe request, and it will be followed up by a Rome's request, which will be followed up by a you request. <laughs> All right. This is Oh, uh-huh. George said, Lex, keep your hands to yourself. Um, <laughs> for Moose Girl. Before that, for Rome's there, uh, Colt Clark and the Quarantine Kids doing Voodoo Chow. Uh, yeah, uh, interesting. Okay, uh, and uh, we kicked it off there with uh, for Chloe um, in excess. Elegantly wasted. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah, keep man. your hands to yourself, 2020. No hugging, no kissing. That's right. Keep your hands That's to right. yourself. And wear a mask if you're going to have sex. And That's do the. Uh, um, I'm not going to say. <laughs> Never what? mind. Anyway. Do it doggy style. If you're, yeah, there you go. You're like, I didn't want to say it. I wanted like someone else to say it. <laughs> well, I'm the only other person here, so. <laughs> right. I mean, like you know what I meant, though. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or wait, you anyway. don't have to. It doesn't have to be doggy. It can be reverse cowgirl. 
or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, 69 <laughs> probably would be okay. I guess, yeah. I mean, but with the mass, it would be pretty hard. Oh, yeah, it was pretty hard to eat. I mean, the fuck. <laughs> okay. Think about it, people. Okay. A cloth mask with no filter, just this piece of cloth over you, this thin piece of cloth. Uh huh. Okay, if you got a really bad cold and your nose is really running, that mask isn't gonna stop your germs from getting out, dude. If you start coughing in your hand, but you got like, if you start coughing with a mask on, I would suggest taking off the mask while you're coughing. Yeah. You know, I, I just, it, it, if you guys don't think about this, really, like, like seriously. Unless you want crap think, all over your face. Yeah, like, I mean, when you <laughs> sneeze sometimes, like, if your mouth is open, something will come out of your mouth, right? Sure. But that cloth mask isn't going to stop shit. No, and, no. I mean, and, and most people aren't washing them, dude. No. They're wearing the same mask day after day, the same cloth mask. Nasty ass mask. There's a lot of people, they, they only have one because they didn't buy extra or nothing, you know. So they're wearing the same thing over and over again. That's doing you more harm than good because there's germs in the mask. And when you wear a mask, you're breathing in those germs that are on that mask. Right? Right. I mean... When you think about those thin paper, those blue masks, those are basically paper. That ain't doing shit, dude. I mean, and then, okay, so you got the the convenience store, and they put up the plexiglass barrier, right? Right. But yet they make their employees wear masks because the governor says, you know, that's an order, right? Yeah. But, okay, so if you got the plexiglass shield, why do they got to wear a mask? Uh who knows? Right? Who knows? Like, the plexiglass shield is supposed to be the barrier, well, right? They, they must need, like, a total bubble or something. Yeah, it's just like, you people are... And, I guarantee you, okay, when this first started, people are like, oh, yeah, I think of all the nasty stuff we touch every day that the public touches. And they're like, gas pump handles. Okay, so I, I'll, I've i been aware of the germs on gas pump handles for a while, and before all this shit started, I had hand sanitizer in my car, the good stuff, not mm-hmm. the bad stuff, uh, the semi-good stuff, I should say. Anyway, um, so I've always been on that bandwagon. Like, if you touch something that the public touches a lot, you know, you, you do the math there, right? Hopefully. Like, I'm kind of a germaphobe, so, like, if you touch something that's top or has germs on it and you touch your face after that, Without washing your hands in between, you're you're running a risk, you know. Sure. <laughs> and this is before the COVID stuff, you know. Oh yeah. But people don't think about when you go to the grocery store or the gas station or whatever, and you put your card in a little machine, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to touch the machine because it's not it's not like static; it moves around, right? Yeah, and so you have to touch the machine with your hand, and you got to push the buttons to put your pin number in. Right. Well, that is the most touched thing in that goddamn store. Okay. You would think. Right, and so if you leave the store, wash your hands or hand sanitize or whatever, you know, or don't touch your face. Right. But then the problem is, Grim, is you get in your car, and you touch your steering wheel. Okay. Okay. Without before you hand sanitize, okay, you know, and you touch your keys too, right? Sure. And so before you hand sanitize, you touch that steering wheel, or you touch the key, and you turn the, or you know, I have a push button, so I push that button. This is before I hand sanitize. So guess what I just did? You. I transferred the supposed virus. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because those gas stations and shit, they don't wipe down those goddamn card readers. Okay? I was in one store when this first began, like in Fe- in April or May, and they were actually wiping down the, the the card thing. You know what I mean? Where you pay? Sure. But in, if they don't do that after every guest, you, you guys see the insanity and all this shit? 
a, I mean, a, a virus so deadly that you'll never know you even have it. Right. I mean, viruses existed before <laughs> the COVID. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like people like before this COVID thing. I will, my kids call me a germaphobe long before the COVID thing, dude. Yeah. And I mean, I was like, wash your hands. Every, I mean, I was like so hardcore about hand washing, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, because right. that prevents cold. Yeah, that's good. The more you wash, it it prevents disease and illness. If you wash your hands, if you're, you know, touch public things. Right. You know what I mean? You you want to wash your hands. And that's okay. just common sense, though. Okay, we got it. Now we're gonna play the last set here. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> right, yeah. it's the common. It's basically the common cold, you right. know. Exactly. And, and if you have a cold and you have underlying conditions, you're gonna have issues more than a normal healthy person. But you know, yeah. okay, Graham, play this. All right, this is one of the uh, oldest Freakers Ball classics that there is. It's a guy by the name of Billy Blaze. Black Betty. <laughs> Christopher Amoroso, Black Betty. <laughs> I love that version of that song, man. All right. Before that, the Pretty Reckless off their brand new one. It's called 25. Um, it's actually not even out yet. It'll come out in February. But uh, it's called, uh, from the, the album is called Death by Rock and Roll. And uh, the song is 25. Uh, before that, John Lee Hooker, the great John Lee Hooker. And Van Morrison, anti-lockdowner, doing baby, please don't go. And we kicked it off there with Billy Blaze. Think, think, damn it, think. <laughs> right, you know, that's a good thing to do. Instead of just take someone's word for it, I would suggest using your brain. Yeah, from time thinking. to time. You know, time, every, every, every now and then, kick that thing into gear and... It's and there for a reason. Make sure it's it still works. It's not there to be idle, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, then. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. I'll be on Sunday with the Blues at noon Eastern, and uh, Hal Anthony follows me. And then no, say, he didn't say Tink. He said Sink. Thank you, Dink. Sink. <laughs> Sink. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Have yep. a great weekend. Have a good... Whatever. Time. Have a good whatever. Have a good whatever. Peace. Peace.